What's up guys, Cali Sunset Gaming with you again and today I'm giving you five top tips on how to adjust the settings on The Last of Us Part 2 to make you an unstoppable killer. Make sure that you guys stick around for all five tips because at the end I'm going to be giving you a little bonus just to give you Crusade for Justice that next level. Let's get to it. Now, I know a lot of people at this current time are unhappy with The Last of Us 2. There's some people that love it, there's some people that hate it. It's very similar to the first game in a lot of ways, uh, which is one of the things that a lot of people are upset about. Seven years we had to wait for a game and it's essentially a copy and paste, just albeit incredibly beautiful and a lot smoother than what the first one was. This isn't going to be a video about my personal opinions about the game. This is purely just going to be about how you can adjust the options. So if you want in a video like that, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below and maybe I'll get around to giving you guys my personal opinions on how I felt after completing The Last of Us 2. Now these five options we'll get into straight away, but if you have any options of your own after watching this video that you want other people to check out, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below too, just so that they could try your options and see if it adjusts their gameplay in a positive way. So tip number one, navigation assistance. Now the game is pretty easy to navigate as it is, but there's a lot of people that sometimes find themselves just wandering around in circles, not really knowing what to do next. Now this tool is great for those sorts of people, and also if you're trying to do like a speed run through the game, this helps too. Essentially what you want to do is go to options and then click accessibility. From there you go to navigation and traversal, and then you go to navigation assistance and just turn it on. Essentially, it's just going to be a big arrow telling you where to go next. Like I said, it's a really handy tool if you're trying to just speed run through the game. Tip number two is turn your reticule to a dot. When the game starts, your reticule is actually a circle. What that does is it shows you where the possibility of the bullet trajectory can go. And it's quite big depending on the type of gun that you're using, which is really annoying. For a lot of people at the minute playing Call of Duty, the reticule is just a dot. So what you can do is you can actually change the settings and turn the reticule to a dot. That way it matches a lot of other shooters that people are currently playing. To do this, it's really simple as well. You go onto options and then you click on HUD. And then when you go over to reticule, all you do is change it to simple. It's that easy, it's that easy. And to me, I found out that I'm a lot more accurate when I'm using the dot rather than the circle. I mean, I don't want to brag, but... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's that easy. It's really that easy. <laughs> I can't even pretend to be big-headed on videos. It's just... Oh, it just comes off like I'm being an absolute moron. Tip number three. This is a big one. Who likes the Matrix? Put your hands up. Put your hands back down, I can't see you. Doesn't matter, it's a joke. Now slow motion in video games is obviously awesome. The one that's most popular to me is obviously Max Payne, bullet time. In this one, you can do the same sort of thing. Slow down time, whilst you can't jump out the way of bullets, that's a bit excessive. What you can do is slow down time when you're in a fight and it gives you a lot longer to dodge. And also, when you come into contact with enemies, you can slow down time and actually manage to pull off that perfect headshot. Line that up with the fact that you've got the reticule changed to a dot, makes it a lot more accurate. And you end up finding yourself just popping heads. It's that easy. Like popping... spots. To do this, you go into the options menu and you click accessibility. From there, you go down to combat accessibility and you turn it on. Once you turn it on, you can go down to slow motion and activate it. What you want to do is you want to set it as toggle. Essentially the touchpad on your controller, all you have to do is flick it to the right and then it will enter slow-mo. And then to get back out of it, 
on the right side, you flick it to the left. Win a winner chicken dinner. At any point you can turn into Max Payne, just without the popping pills. Actually, no, you do pop quite a lot of pills in this game. It's like Max Payne. Now this is gonna help you loads when you get into combat, especially when you're outnumbered. Just gives you that extra edge to be able to slow down time, gives you a few more seconds to think, a few more seconds to pull off some shots, or maybe get those dodges in combat. Tip number four is where it starts to get juicy. Real juicy, so prepare yourself. For this, it's called high contrast display. Now I know what you're thinking, Cali. when Naughty Dog announced that they were gonna have high visibility display, it was for people that had eyesight that wasn't 2020 or people that had difficulty differentiating different types of colors people with disabilities and then you sort of take a step back are you really utilizing the good nature of naughty dog to expose its gameplay and make it easier and make it more in your favor all on the basis of exploiting a disability yeah yeah i am what are you can do about it <laughs> now to adjust this high contrast display, you go down to options, accessibility, and you go to magnification and visual aids. Once you've clicked that, you go to high contrast display settings. What I would do is set it to number one. The reason I set it to number one is because the color coding is the most vivid. So for instance, enemies will be red, items will be yellow, and you'll be blue, and every other ally in the game will be blue. What you can do is you can set this to toggle. So all you would do is on the left side of the touchpad, you would flick left and it will activate it. And all you have to do is flick right on the left side of the touchpad and it will turn it off. Now to me, this is incredibly similar to detective mode on Batman. So you know you can change detective mode. And it makes you see everything in his like bat vision. Well, it's exactly like that, but 10 times better. In listen mode, rather than enemies glow white, once you turn this on and you have listen mode activated, what it will do is it will change the enemies glow to red. That way it makes it a lot more vivid and a lot easier to know exactly where the enemies are. On top of this, it will also show items in yellow. This includes the collectibles, which makes it 10 times easier to find them, 10 times easier to pick them up. And as a result, you can get all the trophies because what's better than going around collecting all those stupid cards that they've put in the game as some weird collectible that nobody really cares about or coins coins what i want a coin i want a gun i want a hat i want a i don't know because even once you get all the cards what does it mean nothing you get a trophy and Oh look, oh look at me, oh, oh post-apocalyptic, collected loads of cards, oh, 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 oh look at me. Pathetic. I mean, I still did it, but that's, that, that's not the point. Tip number five is sonar. Yeah, you heard it right. Ellie turns into a dolphin. Actually, it might be beluga whales that use sonar. I don't know enough about nature to make that joke. Should I edit that out? No. I don't think I will. So for sonar, you go to the options menu, click on accessibility, and then you go onto navigation and traversal. Once you're on that menu, what you do is you click on enhanced listen mode, turn that on. Essentially from there, what you can do is you can adjust the range and you can adjust how long it takes to reach that range. The reason that this is really good is because once in listen mode, you can press circle to try and find enemies or you can press square and it will show you where items are. Now, you guys are clever. You're not gonna to need to know why this is an absolutely awesome tool because rather than when you're in listen mode and you can just see a cloud and you don't know how many enemies that are actually there, using this sonar allows you to pinpoint exactly how many enemies that there are. That way you're more prepared. You know whether you need a pistol or a shotgun depending on the type of enemies that you're gonna be facing. It just allows you to be a lot more prepared when you go into these situations. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the super tip. I've gave you the initial five. Now, I'm gonna show you something even better. This is a little juicy one that I've been experimenting with. So, prepare yourselves. You might wanna sit down. You probably already sat down. Sit down somewhere else. Sit on the floor. It'll be safer, trust me. What am I on about? What am I on about? So you know, earlier we were talking about high contrast display. Essentially, you can flick on the touchpad to the left 
and what it will do is it will change the standard colors to preset blue, yellow, and red. Red for enemies, yellow for items, and blue for allies. Now, when you're in listen mode and everything glows red because you see how many enemies there are, or it glows yellow because it's an item, it will send out a sonar. So what you're doing is getting tip four and tip five and... that this makes finding things 10 times easier, as well as pinpointing exactly how many enemies that there are. Rather than just when you're in listen mode, usually you don't know if it's an ally or if it's an enemy. Now you can easily separate between an enemy and an ally. And on top of that, you know exactly how many enemies that there are. So there you have it, they're my tips. I hope this video helped you out. And like I said at the start of the video, do not forget to leave a comment in the comment section below on if these tips helped you on your quest to get through Seattle and lay off the smack down on Abby. Or if you've completed the game, then... I really appreciate you guys checking this content out. If you did enjoy this content, do not forget to like the video as well as hit that subscription button. You'll get a lot more content like this. And if you do enjoy playthroughs, I'm still currently doing a Last of Us playthrough that you can check out on my channel. If you want to be up to date with every single video that I release, make sure that you hit that subscription button. I appreciate you guys tuning in. And as always, I will see you next time on Cali Sunset Gaming.